couple things. Uh, I know I got to speak to you two weeks ago and lay out what we've occurred and what's occurred and what we've done and those kind of things. Um, I guess the first thing I'll address is, for those of you that have cable, um, I've uh, seemed to have upset the advocates for justice in the state of North Carolina. They've decided to run an uh, ad campaign against me over uh, reforming uh, medical malpractice lawsuits within this state. Uh, the first thing I will say in addressing that is, the group called Advocates for Justice uh, they have an interesting name. I'll tell you what they were a few years ago, the same group. They're also known as the Trial Lawyers Association of North Carolina. Oh, disaster uh, Imagine that. So I think their new name fits them a little better. Uh, but uh, what we did is we put a cap on lawsuits for non-economic damages. That's not including your loss of salary for your lifetime for damages. That's not including medical costs and others, which can be millions of dollars. But by the time you're an actual loss, your car, whatever else, like all those, once those are determined, the pain and suffering, the extra money, we limited it at half a million dollars on a lawsuit, over and above everything else. Uh, we also took into effect that when you go to an emergency room, uh, when you're suing, that doctor's working under different conditions uh, than when you go see your medical doctor every two weeks and he makes a decision. Uh, currently, the two had the same liability. Uh, if you missed something in the emergency room and you had 30 seconds to make a decision, you had the same liability as the doctor sitting in their office and seeing you every week for months and could delay all the other patients. So we changed those two and the big things we changed in medical malpractice. Well, guess what? Trial lawyers didn't like that. Uh, John Edwards couldn't have made his uh, significant funds that he made on that process and several others. Uh, so they spent quite a bit running TV ads already against me and how I stood for this and they're bringing out a very sad story of a child who fell with a toothbrush in their mouth, um, ruptured an artery, uh, but didn't do any damage to their throat. So the doctor in the emergency room didn't see it uh, when they came in. There's a lot of lost time damages. So that's what they're running. It's going to be finding the saddest story in the world. What they're not seeing is when you go to the doctor over here and you can't get an OBGYN. Uh, what they're not seeing is when you go to the doctor and you're waiting six hours because they can't get someone to work in the emergency room uh, because of those liabilities. Uh, and the same people who are losing their life and other damages because of that. Uh, that's not what they're talking about. I also want to tell you an interesting story uh, from uh, last week, actually. Uh, and it's one of very much integrity. And some of you may disagree with it, but I want to see how we're, I want to point out how we're governing differently. Uh, this actually comes from the House. Uh, Tom Tillis, uh, we had a joint caucus meeting scheduled. Uh, it's also the beginning of the ACC tournament, Thursday was, and uh, I know there were some other events people were attending. Uh, but the House session had to adjourn and go to the joint caucus. Well, when they came back into session, Enough Democrats had left for the ACC tournament and stuff that suddenly the House had three fifths and could have overturned the veto of the governor uh, on the president's uh, Obamacare, although we're now being told that's a racist term, uh, mm -hmm. that the Obamacare is a racist term. Uh, we had the vote, they had the votes in place to do it. But when they took the votes, Tillis was told and others that. Several of the caucus had told the Democrats there would be no bills coming up when they returned before they left. And because of that, he refused to hold the vote. Okay, we're not going to be about going through. We're not going to do this by hook and crook. We're not going to have the lottery votes that the Democrats ran through. But I will also tell you that he made a very clear statement. From this point on, anywhere any time that they show up on the floor from now to the end of session they can bring that vote up for consideration so no matter where we stand he made a clear statement anywhere anytime it can happen at this point on but he wasn't going to drop his integrity to get it done legislatively and i understand how strong people may feel about those issues and other things but that's who we are and that's who we want to be as elected officials and as representatives I uh, also had the privilege yesterday to come over uh, 
tour Madison County Schools with the superintendent and others. Uh, it's something I've set up once a month. I meet with about all six superintendents of my district and we meet in a different county. Uh, Ray Rapp got to come for the first hour yesterday and speak to the principals in the same group. And there's a lot of things that they're worried about here in Madison County. The budget, education for students, those kind of things. Uh, Ray Rapp chose to talk about none of that. He spent the entire time he had talking about charter schools and how much charter schools were going to destroy public education. Uh, his statements about how it was just ripping the funds out. Um, and I just wanted to say, because he left right after, but I said to the group, you know, you don't have charter schools in Madison County. So whatever you think it's doing to your budget, with the exception of the one, maybe two students who are going to leave here and drive to Asheville, to go to one of those schools, it doesn't affect you. But he's going to take a half hour of your time to tell you how much this is going to keep us in the state. His charter schools, and how he's going to fight for the traditional public school. Uh, and quite frankly, leave us, West North County, with no options in education. I'm not throwing off on our public school, but where I grew up in Mitchell County, if something happens, uh, bullying, whatever else, conflict with teachers, uh, even of course, you have no other option for education other than that one school. And the one thing about our public school system is there is no one size fits everyone in education. And so we're trying to get a system in place where even in these rural areas you have a choice in education. Things don't work out, you have somewhere you can go. Uh, I filed a bill this week to allow uh, private schools, charter schools, and homeschool individuals to participate uh, in any sport offered by the athletic teams at Madison High School or others. Uh, here it would be Madison High School. So if they offer wrestling team, they offer a football team, they can come participate in that on the same requirements that anyone in that school would do. My point being your tax dollars pay for the sports as much as they pay for the education. You have a right to participate and I strongly believe sports build leadership, they build character, and we shouldn't be denying that to people who choose another educational option. The High School Athletic Association has screamed their head off. Unfair competition, you can recruit, and all these other things. But, you know, the purpose of me for high school sports is not competition. It's not to win another state championship. It's to grow kids and give them an opportunity uh, when they come to learn the leadership and learn the skills. So, uh, but it's been a pleasure to go through the schools here. It went very well. Uh, I was very pleased at having those conversations. Uh, we're still doing all we can to work. Uh, the voter ID bill is. Uh, <coughs> It's introduced. It's in. I and Wesley Meredith in the Senate have introduced it. Uh, same legislation went in the House. Uh, there's a lot. It's a very mobile piece of legislation right now. There's a lot. We're probably going to make it an election reform bill that includes voter ID. Uh, but we also found, State Board of Election found about 700, in the last month, found about 700 people who had registered to vote in the state of North Carolina. And the ID they used was the ID from the DMV that declares you as a non-citizen. Now these are legal aliens who got a DMV, who got a card from DMV and 700 of them registered to vote. That's our current system. So and when you need to... But there's no fraud that goes on. Uh, that they recently completely threw out. Uh, all the counting, all they did, it came down to four votes between the two sheriff's candidates with a certification that four people who had deceased prior to the election had voted. So even our Dewey State Board of Elections threw that one out. Wow. Uh, and they're going to re-vote that. So when you say it doesn't happen, I can already show you a county that we've had to throw out a sheriff's election because it happened. Uh, so they're going to do everything they can to try to make it out to say that all these people in the state will be disenfranchised and somehow this is a race issue and somehow this is a we hate elderly and young people and you know strangest thing I had was somebody tell me that it means college kids won't be able to vote well state issued ID includes North Carolina State University is an agency of the state they give all their students IDs I worked on state's campus worked on Appalachia's campus worked at Georgia Southern University those students are required to have a state issue ID to eat, to get into their building,
to get into their library and to check out anything on campus. But somehow requiring them to produce that ID to vote means we're discriminating against them. And this is the kind of arguments we're getting back on voter ID. The numbers just aren't there. There is a big physical note. We've fought staff on this. They'll make up their own things. There will be some cost to doing it. Because the real thing about it is, under this bill, the ID will now be free to the individual. Because you can't have a poll tax. That is clearly unconstitutional. The ID will now be free. So all these things are complaining about these people not having IDs. This bill gives them a free ID to show up and use it. So, I mean, that should be pretty well leveled out. This is about, they're going to tell you it's about Republicans elected, everything else. This bill is about having an election that we can feel confident that the results at the end of the day match the intent of the voters who showed up that day and were legal and eligible to vote when they showed up. So, but thank you all again. I appreciate it. I didn't want to take up too much of your time. Uh, excited to be here. Excited to move forward. Uh, we got a lot to do in this state. 2012 is coming like a freight train. And we put every every week, Ralph sends a legislative update out. If you don't get it, you can subscribe to it through his website, or you can just go to uh, to our Madison County website. I always repost his le uh, legislative report on our website. So um, you can always keep in touch that way. Ralph, thank you. You're welcome.